Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Path to Profit Academy. I am the CEO, Dr. Manette Ryer Nalong, with my amazing husband, and you're the chief everything else officer, right? That's right. Chief <laughs> cook and bottle washer. And at the Path to Profit Academy, we love supporting creative entrepreneurs to build profitable businesses. And this week is episode 80. Wow. Yeah. It's kind and of crazy. So the, you said Path to Profit Academy, which is everything we do. And this is the Path to Profit. Podcast. This is the Path to Profit podcast. Yes, but lots of paths okay. to profit. Um, and we're here to help you find your path to profit. And in last week's episode, we talked about the importance of having a promotional calendar and a promotional planner for your business. And this week, we're going to even take that process a little bit deeper because January, this whole month, we're talking about business planning and why business planning matters. So this week, we want to talk about the fastest way to build momentum in your business. And what is the fastest way to build momentum in your business? It's working on a 90-day cadence. A quarterly cadence. A quarterly cadence. And I realized we didn't do the quote of the day, which ties okay. right, I, right into the quarterly cadence. I was searching for cadence quotes and there aren't, aren't very many. So we went to, back to business planning. <laughs> and quotes. we like cadences because we have drummers. Both That's our right. kids are drummers. And strangely, this, this planning quote comes from one of my childhood or teenage year uh, sci-fi fantasy writers, Alan Dean Foster, uh -huh. who says, spontaneity is one of the joys of existence, especially if you prepare for it in advance. So this is about preparing in advance for how things are going to look for your next quarter. And the idea here is that, and, and of course, last week we talked about having a, a full year view of your, uh, your promotional plan. Um, but we want to um, encourage you for the, and, and that's important to have that, that full year view. But on a ongoing basis, we've had it um, advised to us from multiple different places that that 90 day view is much more effective for, um, for planning your business efforts, whether that's new projects that you're going to do, whether it's, um, you know, how you're going to work with your team, Everything outside of 90 days is, is a, a, long, a long way to look out and focus and it's kind of crystal ball type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas within, the 90, within a 90 day period, for the most part, you have a really good feeling for, um, for what's going to happen. If you don't, you know, maybe you need to look at some other issues, but. Yeah, so some of the reasons why you should be thinking in quarters is because it creates consistent momentum in your business. It helps you break down those big picture goals into manageable chunks. It also helps you understand how to go from annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily actions. It can be so easy. A lot of creatives that I know are brilliant at seeing the big, big picture, but they get really overwhelmed because they cannot understand how to get from where they are to that big picture of what it is that they want the most. And this is the way to do it, is to begin to go from annual, to quarterly, to monthly, to weekly, to daily. And when you're looking at a quarterly project, you can see what support do I need this quarter, mm -hmm. right? Do I need to bring in a graphic designer for this quarter? Do I need someone to help me with my social media marketing this quarter? Do I need someone to clean my house so I have more time to work on my creative projects? Like where do you need support? What kind of support do you need? Do you need financial support? Do you need time support? Do you need your husband to take the kids out of the house so you can get more work done or your wife to take the kids out of the house so you can get more work done? So really looking at the next quarter saying, what is it I want to accomplish? How much money do I want to make? from this particular quarter? What are the specific actions that need to happen? And what kind of support do I need? Or it's kind of the four big questions to ask when we look at project planning. Yeah, and I wanna go back to, to something you said about, um, about narrowing the focus or kind of, it, it felt like you said this. I know that personally, I struggle with um, trying to hold all of the ideas and all of the projects in my mind at once. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at a year view, oh, these are all the things we need to get done. Yeah. And, and it just Creates becomes a lot of overwhelm. horribly overwhelming mm -hmm. and I get stuck and I just stop. And throughout my life, and especially now as, as, a, as a, an entrepreneur, I've failed to get things done because of that overwhelm. Whereas if I had just picked one thing, 
and looked at a quarter and narrowed that focus and, and had more laser-like focus, um, I would have at least gotten four things done a year <laughs> instead of maybe one. So um, I, th I think this type of cadence is really helpful for, um, for that type of thing. Um, Excuse me. So you can remove that overwhelm and just decide on the one or two things that you want to get done and, and um, really put off the other things. And I know that's hard. It's hard for people with the bright, shiny idea syndrome. Um, those, those ideas are so sexy and you want to get after them right now. And uh, I guess, trust me, <laughs> that will bring your business to, your, to its knees yeah. because your productivity will just will, will go down, uh, down the drain. You can't do it. And the other thing I think I want to add to that is I can get tunnel vision where we've set out a lot of different projects and I get so focused on one project. It may not be the most urgent or important project at the moment. It's just the one that's caught my attention. The shiniest one for the magpie. The, the shiniest <laughs> one for the magpie. Yes. So it's also making sure that you're zeroing in on the most important projects. And one of the conversations I had this week with a friend of mine was about whether or not she wanted to let go of a big event she was hosting. And I was a good person for her to have a conversation with because we actually decided to let go of hosting a live event for now. We have not decided we're never going to host a live event again. But for the moment, when we started looking at our promotional calendar and our goals, we started asking ourselves some different questions about our projects. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that's been really impactful for me personally was, what do I want more of in 2018 and how do I want to feel, right? We've been talking a lot in the last few episodes about time management and productivity and planning, but underneath all of that is this um, very specific sense of us wanting more grace and ease in our business this year right. and less, less anxiety. And when you look at your year, you've done this big promotional plan, ideally now, if you hadn't, make sure you go back and listen to episode number 79 of the podcast and download our template for creating your 12-month promotional plan. But also asking yourself, when you look at that 12-month plan, does this help me get more of what I want in my life, whether that's health and wellness, whether that's um, money, whether that's just grace and ease, whether that's more relaxation, travel, play, time with your family. I realized not last year, but the year before I traveled a lot mm -hmm. and I really wore myself out right. and felt like I didn't get enough time with my family. So last year I swung way the other direction and I didn't travel enough. Um, in order to meet some of our financial goals that often come from me going to speak at events and traveling to attend events. I didn't do the networking and the outreach that I normally do in a year, in large part because our son was leaving for university and we made an intentional decision for me to stay home so that I could spend that time with him and do the projects that needed to happen that were family related. So our decisions are sometimes about family, sometimes about business, but it's all related. Mm -hmm. So looking at these quarterly projects as what's the most important thing that I need to make happen in the next 90 days, how am I going to make that happen and how do I want to feel about it? Yeah. And I think the other thing we find is that, um, the, the quarters kind of start to naturally line up with things you're doing already. Yeah. So given that you start your first quarter in, on, in January, you know, pretty much by the end of the first quarter, you better have your taxes done, right? Um, because March 31st, you know, all of a sudden it's April and it's tax and you needed, so you needed to be working with your bookkeeper or whoever it is your to, accountant. to get that, um, done in the first quarter. Um, and, and, you know, so on and so forth. That fourth quarter, um, a lot of times you've got, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas type of things happening. And there's, so there's, a, you know, dancing around that happens related to that. Um, so the, there's already, if you look at it, there's already things in your life where you have that type of rhythm within a year but maybe you don't think about them. And maybe every year for 50 years, you get caught off guard by, oh, dang it, it's, you know, the kids are out of school now. It's the first of April. Right. <laughs> and, and, or you could say, oh, okay, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to start to have this type of, of flow and rhythm in my life where I'm, I'm looking in, in my business, where I'm looking at these things ahead of time and, uh, and I'm giving them my attention. And then, uh, you know, you can start to gain some confidence from that, that you don't need to think about fourth quarter things right now. You can think about first quarter things mm -hmm. right now it, with the knowledge that you're going to, you're going to have a plan related to um, how that's going to flow. Um, I want to give a, a practical ex example of that as well. So Brad is from Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada, and there's only really about a month that is the best time to go to Nova Scotia to visit for holidays yes, with it, the kiddos. It's between flies fly season and snow season. Yes. <laughs> so, and August tends to be the month that that is the best month, the warmest month when the water is actually warm enough, sometimes, not all the time, for the kids to swim and everybody to, to play in the water. So over the last 18 years that we've been raising our family, we've tried to go to Nova Scotia every August or every other August as often as possible because it's a really important place to our family, our, our Brad's family has cottages that have been in their family for probably 80 years yeah, now. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's an important part of how we wanna spend our time, how we wanna raise our kids. It's one of those amazing magical places where you kick the kids out the door, there's no television. Right. Say, go play, we'll ring the bell at mealtime, see you later, right? So a lot of freedom that happens and a lot of joy for all of us. And so we know that we're not going to work in August. We're not going to have any big promotions. We're not going to host live events. There have been some Augusts where Brad has been doing Ironman training. And so we didn't go to Nova Scotia that year, but we still didn't have promotions or projects or planning because it was Ironman year. So we're very clear that August is not a work month for us. So where are you already wanting to carve out time? Put that into your planners ahead of time. Because if we're not going to work in August, then we got to do a whole bunch of stuff before August to make sure that we're, our marketing is consistent, our income is consistent, and we can happily go spend a month in Nova Scotia and not look back. Yeah, and this flows out of our discussion in, in episode 79 about your promotional calendar, identifying gaps, um, whether you want those gaps or not. Yeah. And then you can, uh, you can rely on a quarterly cadence to um, actually sync up with, so for instance, if you've got second quarter promotions that need to happen, maybe you're going to have a tax day promotion in April. Well, all that work's got to happen in, in the first quarter. It's not going to happen in the second quarter. So, you know, you had to work with your VA and yourself and whoever else is on your team to, to put together um, all of the, the necessary parts of that promotion ahead of time. So that's part of your planning for the first quarter. Yep. Yeah, so I wanted to share some ideas for types of quarterly projects that um, you might be thinking about. So it could be that your focus for first quarter or second quarter of the year is list building. Mm -hmm. We all know that in today's marketplace that email is gold, right? The more people that you can have on your email list, then the more opportunity you have to build your community, to serve your community, and to monetize that community as well in ways that feel really good and graceful and not icky and and just about promotion, right? So we it takes time to build a list, to build that relationship, and to serve them in a way that feels great to everybody. So that project could be list building. So it's not necessarily a project that's specifically about money. Mm -hmm. It could be a project that's about building your business. Another example of a project might be you're brand new in business and you need to spend the first quarter getting QuickBooks set up, getting all your licenses in place, getting your tax ID number, getting your website built. All the foundational pieces of building your business could be a 90-day project, maybe even a two-quarter project, right. right? So it could be that you're committed to starting a blog. So you're going to do everything you need to do to build, plan, and create content for a blog over the next 90 days. Right? So some of these projects can be foundational to your business. Launching an online course is at least a 90-day project. Sure. It's not an overnight project like Manette thinks it is. Yeah, right. So um, launching a quarterly project, hosting a live event, um, 
creating a membership program like we just did. We mm -hmm. talked about it in our last show. We're launching a brand new, we're so excited, membership group called the Creative Business Accelerator. It is a program that is ongoing to support creatives with all the things they need to know to build a profitable business. And we've been working on it for the last quarter, right? It took us a full quarter just to get all the pieces in place, even more than a quarter, I would say. Sure. Um, I shared in the last one, I spent eight hours last week just writing uh, video scripts and email copy for the promotional part of it. So part of the quarterly project planning is so that you're crystal clear about how much time it actually takes to do a really good job of launching something. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, two more would be, one would be a live event. Um, I thought I said that. Did you say, no. Anyway, it doesn't matter. A live event actually would take six months. Right. To a year, six months to a year, depending on the cost of the event, the location of the well, event. Right? It could be so, a small thing, but yeah. um, so launching a meetup group, yep. um, getting another uh, signature talk underway. Mm -hmm. uh, those would all be um, things that you might plan for a quarter where, you know, you know that for a signature talk, you've got maybe there are slides, um, maybe, maybe it's a 10 minute talk, maybe it's a 30 minute talk. You've got to write it, practice it, give it to people, you know, or practice it on, mm -hmm. on your, uh, your family and uh, your friends. And In your whoever. mirror. That's right. Um, so you can plan all of those things. And then by the end of the quarter, it's time to give it, give it for real at, mm -hmm. uh, at a networking event or, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, live events are, are monsters in terms of promotions and stuff. Um, so that, you know, they're different projects associated to, with a, a given live event. Um, meetups are mini live events. So maybe they're, they're smaller things. Um, so let's um, talk for a minute about once you've actually decided what your quarterly project is, what do you do next? Do we want to pick an example and sort of take that apart or because it's um, we spent the last 15 minutes talking about what a quarterly project is, why we think it's important, um, types of quarterly projects. But once you've decided on the project, what's next? I think it's putting it to paper um, no. in some sort of formal way. And, you know, as a creative, maybe it's a giant piece of paper with a bunch of colored markers. If you've got a team, it needs to be something that's that's shared with the team so that they can see it. Um, you need to have what the out, what your favorite outcome is from this. Mm -hmm. um, you need your to, favorite outcome, what your expected yeah, outcome. That's right. You need to have written down um, what the tasks are associated with it when you expect them to be done, whether it's from yourself or from uh, members of your team, in what order and what priority. Um, let's see, what else can we go with? So first step is that you need a written description of mm -hmm. what the project is. You need a timeline for the project that has a priority of the tasks so that people know on a day-to-day, week-to-week, and month-to-month -month basis what the markers are to know that you're making consistent progress towards the end goal. You need to know who your support people are. We said that at the beginning. So for example, we have a team of people that we have helping us to complete various projects. And so when you have a project, everybody needs to know what their role is in moving that project forward. So clear, clear, clear expectations and timelines and goals for each member of your team, if it's just you, then maybe the support you need is for someone to take some of your personal things off your plate so that you have more time to work on the project. But um, I would say a calendar would be really important yep. that, that visually outlines what all the different steps are. And a description of what the project is, and like Brad said, a clear description of the outcome. Like, what do you want to happen at the end? And also, I would include in your calendar regular, regularly weekly meetings with yourself or your team and or your team to measure progress. Right, because it can be easy to get six weeks in and realize it's going to take more time than you thought, or that you need to pivot a little bit, that it's not going in the right direction. So weekly meetings would be a really important piece 
of staying on track with your plan, whether that meeting is with yourself or with your team. And that meeting should be scheduled into your calendar. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, hey, we're going to talk about it, but make sure that you have a planned meeting for the week. Like we had the intention of having meetings on Monday mornings and Monday mornings ended up not being the best time uh, because we were recording podcasts. Um, I had some European clients I was coaching that, you know, Monday was the best day early in the morning. So we have to make sure that we write that time into our calendar. Otherwise it doesn't happen. So weekly planning sessions and updates would be really important. I think uh, adding any costs, Yes. Cost yeah. That. Being clear about the cost really of budget important. would be probably really important. And maybe this project is costs. something you can completely do on your own and that's great. And it doesn't cost you anything. Um, but maybe it involves your VA or a graphic designer, That's right. right. Or a copywriter or a web developer. Even if it's, Hey, you know, I'm going to work with somebody on Fiverr to get a design for some slides. Ooh, whatever or our is. new favorite. Can we talk about logo joy for a minute? Ah, uh, yeah. Logo joy was pretty cool. What else do we, or and smashinglogo.com smashing logo and, and logojoy.com. Or two really fun ways yeah. we got some new logos. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, I digress. But, you know, do you need a logo? So I would have a clear outline of a description of the projects. What assets do you need to create to make the project come to fruition? So if we use the retreat example, and you're going to host a retreat in October in Bali, which we actually have quite a few friends and colleagues that do retreats all over the world. So there's promotional materials, there's sales materials, there's the actual content for the retreat. Maybe your goal is for the first quarter to create all the assets for the promotion, which will start in April. So it's having clear timelines of the direction in which everything is going is so important to get that momentum. So this is the way you build momentum in your business is through consistency, through planning and through quarterly projects. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it works. They don't have to be 90 day projects that can be shorter than that. Um, but try to make them under 90 days. We don't want to, we don't want you planning this giant thing that's going to take all year. That doesn't help you. No, it doesn't. And to make this simple and effective for you, you guys know I love printables and planners, and I'm trying to create more of those to share with you this year. It's one of my personal fun goals, creative goals in 2018. Is so if you go to pathtoprofitacademy.com, click on the podcast button, find episode 80, there'll be a downloadable quarterly project planner template that you can use over and over again that includes all these specifics that we talk about of the pieces that you need to have in place to have a successful quarterly project that goes fast, that goes well, and that reaches your um, highest expectations for the project. Good stuff. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. I'm Brad Dobson. We're the Path to Profit podcast. I uh, hope you guys have a happy month business planning. Yeah. Love y'all. <laughs>